Visit sayarite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. In this tutorial video, we're going to show you how to make a custom shower curtain for an RV. This is not your normal shower curtain. Along the back side of the sink, we had to accommodate for some shower faucet handles. A cutout in the fabric was made to access those handles. Hems were created on the side and snaps were applied to the wall of the RV and along the countertop and at the bottom edge. So now the shower is ready for use. Here's a look at the old shower curtain. It is amazing what a new custom shower curtain can do for an RV or even a home. Here's what it looks like after. This video is part of our Airstream Argosy renovation. We'll be renovating an Airstream from top to bottom, inside and out. Join us for this exciting video series. Typically, you just need to take measurements to make a shower curtain, but this one is special. It has a cutout for the faucets, so we have to do some patterning. So the first step is showing you how to do the patterning. Let's get started. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put uh, strapping tape and then double-sided tape on our shower curtain down the wall here. There are snaps. There are snaps here. This is where our faucet is for the shower. So we have to have an opening cut out here. And we're gonna decorate this with some beautiful uh, decorative fabric from Sailrite. So I'm just gonna put the strapping tape on. And the reason that I put strapping tape on first and then double-sided tape is that it's easier to get the double-sided tape off my application uh, if I use a strapping tape like this. So we're gonna put this on around the perimeter here. And I'm working from inside the shower so the cameraman can get a good angle. Obviously, this would be easier if I were outside the shower. We're gonna put the strapping tape over top of the snaps. And so just right on top of these snaps that are already installed. And that way we can pattern right to those. We're gonna do the same thing here for the cutout, for the faucet that's under here. Okay, now down here, there are snaps, putting it right on top of the snaps. And on top of the strapping tape, now I'm gonna put my double-sided tape. And again, you don't have to be particular where this goes because uh, it's just gonna hold up our Duraskrim pattern material. We're gonna do this around the entire perimeter. I'm gonna peel off the transfer paper of all the double-sided tape. Okay, again, I'm in the shower, which makes this a little bit more difficult, but I don't wanna have my back to the camera. I'm gonna take Duraskrim pattern material and I'm gonna baste it up to this uh, pole. And then I'm gonna baste it around the perimeter. I've already cut it to the general size. So what I've done is I've marked it. You can see I've marked a plus one and a half inches with an arrow going that way because I drew my marker line right up against this edge. And then I labeled each where each one of the snaps are. I'm not gonna put snaps in based on this. We're gonna actually take the finished curtain out and install them later. I've also added one and a half inches here because I've, I've marked at the counter and I want extra fabric to come down here so they can install snaps here. And then down here at the bottom, I've actually said minus two inches at that bottom line down here. And this line I actually have in the correct spot and I marked where snaps are there as well. So I think I have it uh, labeled exactly what I need it to for inside of here. Now we're gonna move to the outside so this is our hook, and I'm gonna hook it on the rod here at the top, and you can see that's where the grommet will basically rest. Um, so I'm gonna take my marker, and I'm just gonna go across, da -da 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 -da, trying to be as accurate as possible, and we'll probably strike a straight line uh, when we get to this table. Okay, so that should be the top of the grommet here. On this side, I don't know if you can see that, I struck a line against the wall um, so that it goes nice and straight. And then I put plus three inches because I want extra fabric so it has enough fabric to close. And then down here, I don't have enough pattern material, but that's okay, we can extend that down. We have the floor marked. Uh, I'm gonna mark this out because this is the outside. 
now that we have it patterned, we can remove it. And I do recommend that you do take off the strapping tape that has the double-sided tape on it, because the longer it sits, the more it sets up and becomes firm. So do that carefully. If you have painted surfaces, you may want to do some testing to make sure it doesn't take off your paint. So our line stops here, but this is where the grommets go. So we need to extend that line, and there's a snap position. But we are going to add one and a half inches this direction. I'm not going to add one and a half inches to the pattern, though that can be done. I'm going to make sure I add it to the actual fabric. So I'm just going to extend that line up. Even though there is a snap there, I'm going to have extra fabric. And the grommet, this is the top of the grommet where the rod was. I'm going to extend this line over. This is the grommet that we're going to be using, which is an inexpensive grommet and actually looks really good. And you just snap it together. So this is where I wanted the uh, grommet to be right on this line here, which means I need to add some fabric here so that the grommet's not hanging off the edge. So I'm just going to place my grommet so that the uh, hole, so I can see my line through at the top. And I'm going to say, eh, I want my fabric to stop right about there. So because of that, I'm going to use my clear acrylic ruler and I'm going to make it parallel to the line that I have struck on this, which is our rod. And I'm going to continue that line. You can see here that we actually cut too much uh, pattern material away because this line has to intersect with this line. This line's actually two inches up. That's easy to resolve. We have the lines, so I'm just going to use some of the scrap and I'm going to put it underneath. And what you do is you just use some uh, packing tape and you do that. Now we can extend this line down. And remember, we're going to be adding three inches more here. And then this line can be extended over. And here we're going to take away two inches. So why don't we just go ahead and take away two inches here because I don't need that to be where it's at. So two inches with my pattern material is about here. And that, that keeps this off the floor of the shower. So there's my new cut line for the bottom. And this line looks like it needs a little bit of additional fabric here. This line we're not adding anything to. So now we're ready to cut this out. So we're starting here with the side that has the snaps. And every time I run into a snap, I'm just going to make a dog ear. So there's another snap over here. Because I'd, I'd like to keep that, even though I'm not going to be putting the snaps in until I get the, uh, the shower curtain done. And then when we go out to the with the fabric, we'll put the snaps in right where they need to go. It's never wise to put snaps in based on a pattern or any fasteners of that sort. We're cutting on top of the lines and fairing out anything that my hand was a little bit crooked at. Remember, we're going to be adding one and a half inches here. That's why we labeled it. And the snaps are on the inside of this line. We're not adding anything here. Okay, we already made our two inch line here, so this needs to be removed because we don't want to take away another two inches from that since we already made the line. That's why I scribbled it out. In this chapter, we're going to add to the pattern as marked, add for hems, and cut the fabric to size. This is the decorative fabric that we're going to be using. It looks great. It's going to look awesome in the RV. Nice thing about this fabric is it actually has on the back side a weave where there's a straight line so we can see exactly where the pattern is. A great shower curtain starts with a great fabric. I highly recommend Sumbrella upholstery fabric. Visit the Sayrite website and click on shop and fabric and auto and RV fabric. Then select upholstery fabric. All of these fabrics will work great, but I like the brand Sunbrella, so I'll select Brand on the right side and click on Sunbrella. These upholstery fabrics have a soft hand, so they're perfect for a shower curtain. Here you'll find fabrics that are water, stain, and mildew resistant, plus extremely UV resistant. This is the top edge, and our fabric has a pattern you can see here, so I've got it lined up so it's straight along that edge because the top edge is the most important to make straight. Out, out is facing down, that's very important. 
and we're going to put a sandbag on top to keep it from moving. So we're going to do a uh, hem here that will accommodate this grommet. And this grommet is uh, about one and a eighth inch wide. So I'm going to do a one and a half inch double hem, which means on this edge, this is the finished edge, which means I need to add three inches of excess fabric. And I'm going to use the fabric underneath as my straight uh, line because I can see the pattern. So I'm going to mark it three inches out on this edge. Okay, here is one and a half inches added to this. One and a half inches plus our three inches would be four and a half inches. And this isn't straight. I am gonna follow this because our RV is not straight. So I need to put this on four and a half. And the way to do that is uh, by actually putting your marker or your clear acrylic ruler on the line and then striking the area that's directly on the line and stopping and then moving the ruler so that it's on the four and a half uh, edge and then striking the new section, which I have to move my fabric over a little bit. Because this edge is not straight, notice I mark only where the ruler is lined up. Then I move the ruler and mark where it's lined up again, repeating the steps until I have that entire edge marked. We have one and a half inches that we need to add to this edge. That's uh, with our three inch double hem, that's four and a half inches here too. This edge is our finished edge, so we just need to add our double hem here, which is three inches. Just gonna keep doing this all around the perimeter. This side, we need to add three inches plus our double hem, so that's six inches, but this side's not straight, and we kinda mark the wall. I'm gonna actually just measure over uh, six inches, which is right here, and I'm gonna use this pattern as a straight edge rather than this because I'd rather have this be straight and this side be straight because it's not against any wall. This is against a curved wall, that's why it's crooked. So we're gonna just cut right there. FYI, these are a brand new pair of scissors that we received and now sell at Sayerite. I adore them. So we're gonna just cut on top of our chalk lines all around the perimeter and you can use a hot knife if you want, if you want it, the edges not to unravel, but we are gonna do a double hem so it really doesn't matter. This top edge is straight with the pattern, this side is straight with the pattern, and the bottom is straight with the pattern. This is following our chalk line, this is following our chalk line, and this is following our chalk line, and this is definitely curved. And next, we'll mark our hems and we'll fold the first hem in preparation for mitered corners. Okay, so now we're gonna strike a line on the underside of the fabric at three inches all around the perimeter, and then we're gonna come up and strike a line one and a half inches from that other line or basically four and a half inches from the raw edge. And this will help us to uh, create a very accurate double hem. So we're gonna do this all around the perimeter. Okay, if we create a double hem going one and a half inches, 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 this is very thick. So we're gonna create mitered hems here at the corners and we'll show you what that's like after we put on basting tape here and, and fold this first fold over on all edges. So this is a quarter inch basting tape for canvas and upholstery applications. It sticks very well. It's 100% acrylic. It's not a rubber-based glue that'll yellow in the, in the sun or in time. Um, so you really wanna get your double-sided tape from Sayerite if you want the best. And we're gonna stick it uh, on each edge just about uh, an eighth inch away from the edge. And then what I do at each corner is I put my thumb on top or finger on top and I just rip it like that. So we're gonna put this on all edges. This is an inside turn and you can't do a double hem because you've got all that fabric in the way. So what I do is I take my acrylic ruler and I go to that uh, cr the cross mark here where I have my first uh, seam line and I go to the corner and I just draw a mark like that. And then what I do is I cut uh, following that diagonal 
and I stop a little short, about a quarter inch short of that corner right there. So this allows us to do the double hem. We're going to peel off our double sided tape here and some here because we're going to be folding this fabric up to this corner and we're going to fold to the first line all around the perimeter. So we'll just peel up the rest of the double sided tape and do this around the edges. Okay, because of that slit, we can fold like that and we can fold like this. We still have a double hem to go, but that slit allowed us to create this uh, double or single hem, which will eventually turn into a double hem. We'll be reducing bulk at the corners by creating mitered corners. To create the uh, mitered corner, I'm going to use the 45 degree on the clear acrylic ruler and I'm going to position it so it's on top of that line that we struck here. So it's right on top of that line and I'm going to move this over up, 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 up until it reaches the corner right there. And then I'm going to mark it uh, with a uh, removable uh, fabric pencil here right across like that. We're going to do that to all corners. We're going to take our wonder clip and we're going to take this fabric and fold it so that the hems are out and the right sides of the fabric are facing each other. So we're going to fold it like that and fold it right to this corner and make sure this is flush. So that's right on the corner here. And then I'm going to take my wonder clip and put it back here. Whoops, I missed the fabric that and I'd like to put it about an inch or so away from the mark that way I don't have to unclip it when I sew. If you've done this right the marks should be right on top of each other which they are. So this is what your miter should look like. We're going to do this to all corners. All right the next step for the mitered corner is to sew directly on top of that blue um, mark. So I'm going to lift my presser foot and I'm going to sew Oh, right on top of that, I'm going to make my stitch length about three and a half, four millimeters. And I want to do a little bit of reversing at the beginning. So sew and then reverse off the fabric a little bit there. And then we're going to sew through here. And sometimes what I'd like to do is stop about, about a millimeter from this corner because this corner is going to have a little bit of bulk. And that kind of sometimes opens up the corner a little bit. So I'm about a millimeter away from the corner and I'm going to do some reversing here. There we go. So now we take this out. So here's what your miter looks like after you've sewn it. Looks good. And what we're going to do is on this side where this little ear is sticking out, I'm going to trim all the way down uh, perpendicular to these folded edges. I'm going to cut with my scissors right at the, almost at the point, straight down. Okay, then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut about a quarter inch away from my stitches. And that completes our minor corner. This little cut here helps to remove the bulk at the corner. Now that the miters are made on all the corners, we're going to fold the second hem. Before we turn this miter right side out, we're going to put double-sided tape uh, right not right at the edge, but like a quarter inch or half inch away from the edge because I don't want to sew through the double sided tape. With light fabrics, uh, sewing through the double sided tape will sometimes gum up your needle. So I try to avoid it. With heavier canvas, it's not that big of a deal. So now that we have the double sided tape all around the perimeter, I'm going to peel it back here and peel it back here. And then I'm going to stick my finger in here and turn this miter into the corner, tuck it into the corner, I should say, like that. Make sure it's all the way out to the corner. And then we're going to baste our double hem right on top of that chalk line on all the sides. So. There we go. So we're going to do this all around the perimeter and we'll show you what we do with the inside 
corner as well. But this, if you feel this, it looks really good and there's no bulk here at all. This is the exact same amount of layers, three layers here, three layers here. Now there is a thickness here, but it's such a small transition that it's easy for a sewing machine to go over that. The inside corner will need a patch to reinforce it. That's what we're gonna do next. I've cut a piece of scrap and notice that I can actually match up the pattern a little bit. Not that that's crucial, but uh, I think I'm gonna try to match it up like it's going across here and going across here. So now what I wanna do is basically determine where I'm gonna cut this and I'm gonna cut it a half inch larger than our hem out here. So if I put it on like that, I could strike a line here going all the way up and then a half inch from this edge going all the way up. So right like this. Okay. So now the bottom, what I'm going to do for now is just mark it from corner to corner. This will be too big on the bottom but uh, we'll show you what we do about that here in a second. So what we're trying to do is just basically create some bulk for this corner. Um, and this is gonna be hemmed around the perimeter. So I'm just gonna cut it with scissors. You aren't gonna see the raw edge. So I'm gonna put the quarter inch seam stick uh, for canvas and upholstery on these two edges first. And then I'll also put it on this um, diagonal that we cut. Okay, and then we're going to peel off the transfer paper of all the edges. Now we're going to fold this edge in to about a half inch. I'm not measuring anything, I'm just kind of guessing. And then we're going to fold this one in to about a half inch. Like that. And the idea is that it fits onto this. And now, so what I want to do here is I want to fold this back about a half inch, but we can modify this. So let's see if we need to. So we stick that on there and then on there. This much is going to stick out. I need to go back further because I don't want this, I don't want that to raw edge to be seen here. So I'm going to peel this back and I'm going to go a little bit deeper. Uh, right about there, probably. Now let's see how it fits. Yes, this won't be visible and it'll reinforce that and it's very close to that corner. It's a little bit sticking out of that corner, but that's quite all right. We're going to trim off this excess uh, going back a little bit so hopefully it doesn't show any raw edges. I could touch that with a hot knife and I think I probably will. So I'm just going to touch these uh, tips with a hot knife and that should help prevent it from unraveling since this is a th synthetic fabric. It's actually an acrylic. I believe it's umbrella. Now I'm going to put double sided tape on this so that we can stick it on and make sure that we're happy with it. Just a real quick way to reinforce a, an inside corner like this with a double hem. There we go. Next, we'll take it to the sewing machine and sew around the perimeter, securing the hem. Okay, I'm going to put my magnetic guide on this, but I'm probably going to keep an eye on my presser foot more than anywhere. I'm going to start sewing right here at the corner, and we're going to sew all around the perimeter. I'm going to try to keep my center foot right along this folded edge. And my first stitch, I'm going to do some reversing, and I'm also going to increase my stitch length to about 5 millimeters, which will hopefully reduce some of the puckering a little bit.
Oh, one other thing that we need to do is you need to subscribe to this channel and click the bell to be notified of new videos when they become available. That is the best way to support our YouTube channel. These are free videos and we want to continue doing them, so do us a favor and click that bell. When I get to the corner, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bury my needle at the pivot point right about there and then my needle's coming up slightly and I'll pivot by lifting my presser foot with my needle buried and I don't lose my spot, lower my presser foot and sew down the next side. And we're going to do this all around the perimeter. Sometimes with light sewing, especially depending on your sewing machine, you may want to grab the fabric from back here and kind of pull. That helps to uh, smooth out the fabric. Uh, and so sometimes I like to do that. Now we're coming up to this patch. We want to make sure that everything is buried exactly how we want it before we get to it. That looks good. So I'm going to make sure the presser foot goes over that, which it did. I'm going to move the magnetic guide because this is going to run into an inside turn. Okay, when I get there, bury the needle, lift the presser foot, rotate down this side, straighten everything out, lower the foot, make sure everything looks good. It does is a little bit of a fragmentation here. I think I'm going to touch that with a hot knife. So by touching this a little bit, because I, I, it's a little bit exposed more than I wanted to, probably should have made it a little bit bigger, but this will keep it from getting worse. There we go. Now we're going to have to come around and, and get this corner, but we'll do that uh, after we sew around the perimeter. Now we're back to where we started and we sew into that stitch and we do a little bit of back tacking here. So as you can see, the mitered corners made it easy for us to transition at the corners. Okay, so now for this corner, what I'm going to do is just sew across here and do a little bit of reversing at the beginning and the end. On the inside of our shower curtain, we're going to be using a plastic we liner to prolong the life of our decorative fabric that we nice. spend so much time making. We're also going to be using that plastic liner to help position our grommets for installation. We have a, a liner that we picked up um, from our, well, our Walmart. And uh, I've cut it basically a little bit larger. You can see on the outside here, it's about an inch larger, comes down to the bottom. And that'll kind of help protect our fabric. So I'm going to line up this top edge because I want it, uh, the uh, grommets to be in the same position as the liner. The liner will eventually be on the bottom side. This grommet is about the same distance from this edge, though this one's going to have a snap. So there's the mitered corner is under here and there's a little bit of bulk there. So I'm actually going to move it off of that because I'm going to be using a grommet that uh, can't go through too many thicknesses. And I'm going to mark it. Uh, each one of the locations. This edge is flush up here, so this should be right where the grommet goes. I'm going to do that for every one of these locations. So I'm going to use the serrate drill hole cutter set, and I'm going to choose the half inch or the number four size from it, and I'm going to put it in my drill. This cuts great holes. I'm going to put a cutting pad on the bottom side of where I need to uh, place the hole, and cut through. So we're going to continue to cut all the holes at the locations that we marked and then we're going to flip it over and install our grommet. Okay, we're going to flip this because we want the grommet's pretty side to be on the, the uh, outside surface. So in my opinion, this side is much prettier and so this side is going to be on the underside, which is the correct side and we're going to push it through that hole we made. Make sure the fabric is resting beneath the flange or right alongside the flange. So it's that hole's on the tight side, but that's what we want for a good grommet installation. It looks like this would go down like this, but it actually goes up. So this is the wrong side of the fabric. And what I do is I just give it a blow with a mallet. Like that, and she's installed. That's a little bit thick because of the miter. 
The next one won't be nearly as thick. These snap together grommets are available in beige, white, and black. Male on the right side of the fabric. Push it through the hole. You can sometimes make the hole a little bit bigger if you're having trouble because uh, sometimes there's just too much fabric. But we got three layers of an upholstery fabric, so these should work. They can't do thick assemblies. Put that on top. There we go, and that's what the outside looks like. Nice looking grommet. One of the reasons I like to use these is I don't, it doesn't require a die set. Um, but if you have a spur, grommets, and stuff like that, and you already have the die sets, you can use those as well. This is the wrong side of the shower curtain, and so this will go in like this. So that's what it will look like on the outside. And then we also want to put that on like that. So we're going to do that for each one of these locations. The snap studs are already installed on our shower. Now we need to install the socket and the button on the fabric and install them. We're going to use the Easy Fit positioning system for snaps. You can see that it has a uh, spike and then it's a socket on this side. And what you want to do is you want to secure it to each one of the studs that are already screwed in here. Okay, you can see that we have uh, all these on and you don't have to buy a ton of these things. You can actually just move them around as you go and install snaps. You can install like three at a time, but uh, I've installed uh, pretty much all of them. So you can see that I'm not going through the plastic liner so that I can replace it if it gets moldy. There's one of my fasteners and I'm going to just position it and poke it through. And the nice thing about this is it, that if you don't like the location, you can move it again. So once we have a few uh, pins in the location, we can actually just take a marker or a pen or a fabric marking utensil and mark each one of the areas where the stud is sticking out. That way we can tell where each snap is going to be positioned. And uh, we didn't do all of them yet. We did just down this leg and we're going to install snaps and then reinstall it and put on the remainder. I'm going to be using the press and snap tool and I'm going to load a button down here. You can also use other tools which are less expensive, but I love this tool because it puts a hole and sets a snap all at the same time. And I put the, the socket up here and we're ready for installation. So here's a location. You can tell by my pen mark here. We need to make sure that the a button on this, is on this side and the socket is on this side for the way that we installed it. So to make sure that that happens, uh, the button's on the top here, and there's my little uh, location. So I'm going to squeeze it to right at that location and depress the lever. Make sure there's plenty of tension down so that it compresses the barrel. That's our first snap, and it looks great. So now we'll just do this for all these other locations as well. Okay, this is another uh, installation tool that will put in nickel-plated brass snaps, which is what we're using, and it's inexpensive, and then you'd use an eighth-inch hole cutter. This is a hole cutter that actually goes in a drill, and then we can use this cutting pad uh, to uh, drill the hole through the fabric, and then use a hammer on this. We're not going to demonstrate that, but there are ways you can save money. Here's a look ahead from inside the shower where the snaps are installed already to the wall and near the counter. And we have that plastic lining that we bought to help prolong the life of the decorative fabric. It can be replaced if it gets nasty. Coming up next is a materials and tools list. This custom shower curtain looks great because we picked a great fabric available from Sailrite. You'll find hundreds to choose from. Want to see more tutorial videos about the RV restoration project? Click the link at the top right or click the link in the description below. I'm Eric Grant and from all of us here at Sailrite, thanks for watching.